Welcome back to another video. Today I'm meal prepping. I'm gonna show you two different days worth. This is day one. It's actually just our day off in the evening. Solo, Luca, and Judah have been making dinner and so while they're taking time to do that, I just thought I'd take a couple hours, it's not even a couple hours, and make a bunch of breakfast things because we have been behind in breakfast things. And Peace is cooperating with me so that <laughs> she's giving me time. It's so nice to make breakfast things ahead. Oh, you got boogers in your nose, girly. It's nice to make breakfast things ahead because then we can have healthy things that don't take a long time because sometimes those healthy things take longer. So. What I've done, I'll just show you really quick. I've got bread in my bread makers. I usually do two loaves at a time because, or two batches of dough at a time. It makes four loaves, and that's usually pretty good for us for a week. That's enough bread, those four loaves. See the Brussels sprouts that are happening for dinner. Oh, time to put the eggs in. I made these egg muffin things. I didn't add milk in it like all the recipes say you should, so we'll see how they turn out. I actually forgot salt too and had to re-add salt they haven't cooked yet and i ran out of muffin cups i have a lot oh Seth, what oh really is bell not giving you what you want oh tell her you go tell her i couldn't find the rest of my muffin cups i know i have more than this so we just threw the rest in a casserole dish i'm gonna bake those oh boy Maybe I'll get to talk. Maybe they won't let me talk much, but I did eggs, a bunch of eggs, a lot of green onions and cilantro and mushrooms and bacon crumbles. This is like, I'm done with this. <laughs> I'm gonna bake them at 350 for about 25 to 30 minutes. I've got a batch of yogurt going here. I don't know if I said that yet. I'm waiting for it to get to 180 degrees, doing it in the Instant Pot. It's pretty easy this way. And then I take it out and cool it to 110 degrees and then add the yogurt and put it in overnight on the yogurt setting. So that's pretty simple. We're getting up there. Oh, close. I usually have to use the saute because I do a gallon at a time. I usually have to use the saute button at the end just to get it up to the temp I need. It gets close without it. I probably would be just fine if I had only used half a gallon. Oh, here we go. I got there just a minute later, so I pulled that yogurt out and we'll let that cool. Tomorrow morning, I will add maple syrup to that yogurt and I think tonight, in the morning, Okay, hold on a second, guys. Nope. Okay, I'm sitting with her now. <laughs> In the morning, I will add maple syrup, and I'm going to thaw a bag of frozen berries tonight. So I'll add those to the yogurt, too, so I'll make it ready to eat and wonderful. And then I'm about to make granola, and Belle, I recruited Belle. Something's beeping. Belle's over here making um, waffles. A lot of them. Over here, we have a big, big bowl of mashed potatoes. What may have been beeping is my dehydrator, which is making kale chips. Judah started these for me this morning. Ooh, they're ready. Mmm, they're good. Eggs, bread, granola, and lots and lots of waffles. Actually, this is only one day of waffles. <laughs> Here's the yogurt finished product. We will put this in the fridge. Tastes great. Has maple syrup already in it and berries. We'll serve it with a little granola on top or use it in smoothies or anything. Some of the kids just had some of this this morning with their waffles. It's a few days later here. I'm doing more kitchen stuff today. So I thought I'd show you what I've been up to. Yesterday I did one project at least. I did some more canning. We got this ground beef. Canned, I canned ground beef. Did you know you can can ground beef? Weird, right? This stuff is still like totally cooling. I'll write on the tops of them and put them away, but I have more of them in here. Five more cans that are just finished. So all together have 12 cans. Each jar of, it's a quart jar, but each jar is two pounds about of ground beef already cooked, which is kind of cool. Got some beans ready to go um, be canned next. And I keep showing you my dehydrated stuff. We have some fruit that's almost gone there. Carrot chips, zucchini, kale chips. Kale chips, although it didn't work in the jar, they get soggy again. They were so good fresh, so I may have to re-dehydrate re them. <laughs> These are nuts that we keep up here, and then berries here. Lots of food preserving projects over here. It's been fun. I've actually, I'm getting more comfortable with the canner all the time. Did I show you guys everything else I canned? I don't think I have. I found room in a homeschool shelf here that, oh, this one I keep behind a lot because it has some really messy activities in it. But I have all these beans. That's why I'm doing more black beans. We've used those the most so far, which we always, we, I knew that would happen. Chickpeas, pinto beans, white beans. I have no idea where I'm putting the ground beef. That's my elbow here. Tomorrow I'm gonna be canning broth, chicken broth, and beef 
broth. The beef broth I just poured off of the meat that I cooked last night, the ground beef. And the chicken broth is because today I have chickens cooking, two chickens cooking in the crock pot, and so I'll make broth out of that. Tomorrow I'll can those as well, probably in quart jars as well, and I really have no place for them. I have no place to keep them. <laughs> the cans that I'm canning. I think I found in my garage up high, I found a tub that can fit under a bed and I'm gonna get a couple of those out. I have, a, I think I have three of them and I'm gonna store some cans under the bed. Gotta do what you gotta do, I guess. We don't have that big of a storeroom and it already has a well-stocked pantry in it, so. Also, if you put those cans or jars, I should say, on shelves, they need to be able to hold all that weight <laughs> under the bed. It's not a concern. You look nice today. You have a dress up outfit on. <laughs> You got the dress up clothes out and they are everywhere. I do have to show you this one thing. This is not a person. <laughs> is this not the freakiest thing? They used a costume because tomorrow morning my kids all have presentations here in our house. They're presenting to Solo and I their first aid presentations. We have three teams and they each have a subject. But one of them made their own dummy and it's terrifying. <laughs> Wait, why do you put shoes on it? <laughs> I keep thinking it's a real person. Oh, it freaks me out. That's not cool at all. It's not a real person. All right, my cans here are almost done. I'm doing all this canning because, you know, it's convenient to have beans and ground beef already cooked. We could have no electricity and make an easy, good meal that fills people up. Or you can just make a little rice for a quick meal. Also, this ground beef came from a freezer that's not even at our house. We were using someone else's freezer because we didn't have enough room for all the beef we bought with the cow and a half we bought. <laughs> that's a long story. So it was nice to get this home as about half of what we have stored elsewhere. 24 pounds is what I did. And so I'm going to go ahead and do the other probably about 24 pounds and can it up. But beyond the convenience of it and having meat stored outside of the freezers in case freezers go bad or something like that, it also is just teaching me how to can and making me more comfortable with our pressure canner. So that's why I keep doing it. It's a good skill to have. By the time I have a garden producing things in the summer, I'm hoping that I'm really comfortable with it and can keep up with canning the produce that we get from it. I'm really hoping for a big garden that produces a lot, obviously. I do need to learn water, water canning, water bath canning. I haven't done that at all, but I'm using what I have. Between the meat and the broth and keeping up with the beans, it will just keep me uh, proficient, hopefully, with the skill. I am learning a little every time. I burned my hands a couple times. <laughs> Thankfully, not too bad. But every time I make a mistake, I learn from that mistake. And so far, everything that I've canned has sealed, which is amazing. We've eaten a number of cans of beans already and they taste great, so oh, we'll see how the beef goes. Same with the dehydrator, just practicing, trying things, seeing what we like. Some things we've liked, some things we haven't. I do think it's fun learning new skills. Last year, I learned milling, milling flour. We also got a Berkey, this water purifier, water filter thing last year. I never really talked about that on camera at all, but that's another thing we learned, learned how to take care of it. I think, I feel like I learned something else last year too, but it's good to learn a little every year. This year is canning. I wanted to get better at dehydrating and do better at gardening too. So those are kind of my goals this year. Although somebody told me about a pasta maker. <laughs> in the comments and I kind of want to learn that too. Let's see. We are solving math story problems while working in the kitchen. I have a small window of time while Peace and Seth are sleeping. I have to take advantage of it. So thankfully I got a couple chickens in the, brush, in the crock pot this morning. I told you I'll make broth out of that, but I need to today, I want to roast carrots and potatoes, kind of like I do with a roast. And I'm going to roast them because <laughs> we eat a lot of them when we eat them and just put them in the oven. So I'll prep those. And then um, we have company this weekend. A man from Sri Lanka, he's a friend of ours that we've never, you know how you have these friends you haven't met in person? Well, he's a friend of ours we haven't actually met in person. Maybe Solo has, I have not. And we're really excited. He's coming to speak at our church. He pastors a really large church in Sri Lanka. And he is a really fun guy. I've talked to him, I met him on FaceTime. <laughs> He's really good friends with my dad, and uh, so I've met him on FaceTime and stuff. It's fun, I'm competing with dishes over here. It's fun to have him in town this weekend, but I do wanna have a couple meals that are just so easy and ready to go, so I wanna, I wanna prep those. I'm thankful she is doing some pots and pans right now, <laughs> cleaning them. So we have some lasagna. Judah made spaghetti for dinner last night. Yesterday was crazy day and I am so thankful. He was willing to make dinner. So I asked him to make double the sauce. 
So he made spaghetti sauce and just made a ton extra. So I have these two big jars. So we're gonna use that and make lasagna. I thawed some cream cheese, oh. remember to do that, because I keep that in my freezer. And what else? I got some noodles for that. We're gonna use the cream cheese to make like our own, instead of ricotta cheese, we'll mix it with egg and cottage cheese. And then I have mozzarella and Parmesan here. I think Belle might be making lasagna for me. Are you making lasagna? Oh yes, she is. So the meat's already cooked for that. That'll make it super easy. And for the first time, I'm gonna take some Italian's advice from my comment section. Section. Thank you to the people who know real Italian food <laughs> who told me to use this fresh mozzarella and just crumble it over the lasagna instead of a big block of mozzarella cheese. So I have high hopes for that. I hope our friend from Sri Lanka doesn't mind cheese because the other thing I was gonna make is, oh, a white chicken chili. That has cheese in it too. <laughs> oh yeah, and I don't wanna forget spinach on the lasagna. All right, we gotta pound it out. Okay, we use the Trim Healthy Mama book for our recipe for the cream cheese, cottage cheese, and what else, Spell? Eggs, <laughs> to make like ricotta. And then we use Nana's recipe for putting the lasagna together, which is just written on the back of an envelope. And I was telling her how we we're gonna put this fresh mozzarella on top. Because you trust the Italians. It's gonna be Especially epic. when it comes to lasagna. Yes, and somewhere in there, add spinach. It's gonna be amazing, thank yes. you for doing Eli this Eli won't eat it though. No. <laughs> well, and more for us. No, I'm just kidding. He will. He'll eat it. Okay, she's doing that. Today is Thursday, so I'm gonna prep the roast bread. vegetables for tonight's dinner with the chicken. I'm talking this out loud. Tomorrow night we're gonna have fish tacos. I'm not prepping that at all. Me. Oh, you guys have a soup thing. Yeah, I gotta make chocolate soup. What? I, I told you what chocolate soup is already. Oh, pudding? It's pudding, yeah. Okay, they have a soup night with the youth. It's like a soup contest, so. Judah's making his cheese potato. And so you decided soup. to do chocolate. And so I wanted to make that, but he was like, bro, I own that recipe. And I was like, okay, fine. And so now I'm making <laughs> chocolate soup because we realized no one else is bringing desserts. All right, and then the lasagna oh, and the white chicken chili that I'm gonna make, those are both uh, gonna be for the weekend with our friend. We can't get the pressure canner open. <laughs> I did a batch yeah. late last night and she opened it for me at the end. Ooh, be careful of the, the face, the money maker. <laughs> okay, we'll leave that for a little while now. Anyway, she has the trick for opening it apparently. Pulse, pulse, pulse. Try to do it like over and over because it was like midnight and I was like, I just want this thing to open. It must have been too much pressure in there, so. Yeah, so I just like twisted it and I put it back and it was like, do these buttons on the side do anything? They yeah, ignoring the whining child over there. Hi, She's been whining all day. <laughs> she didn't get much sleep last night. I had to divert to get my black beans in the pressure canner since my meat was done. It's super easy now because I cooked them the first time I did it. I did it on camera and a bunch of you told me I don't need to cook the beans first. So it's worked beautifully. I've done a lot of beans since then. And I just pour hot, I soak them overnight, but then I just pour hot water over them. Just, just boiled water actually. And away we go. I got the cans in there. And I have a Zoom meeting I forgot about. Thankfully, Belle's making progress. Listen, someone sent us this little gadget here. It is the best thing. And I figured out that you can make it more like powdery and stuff if you put it in twice. So that's, it takes no electricity and you just shred cheese There's no in cheese seconds. Left. It is truly amazing. <laughs> so good. The first layer is sauce. The Parmesan cheese, then noodles, then ricotta cheese, which we use about this much cream cheese, and like two cups of cottage cheese, and four eggs, because we doubled it. We use the recipe from the Trim Healthy Mama book for that. And then I haven't gotten really this far. Parmesan cheese, noodles, Daddy, sauce, Tina. and more Parmesan cheese, which I might also run out of in <laughs> mozzarella cheese. What I figured out to do for the Parmesan cheese is so that we use this, right? But it comes out like looking like these. So what I did is I just put it right back in and it'll come out in that like, you know, classic, it's not gonna work because I'm not using my other hand. Comes out and like, you know, looks like Parmesan cheese. I'm getting this pressure canner up. I did a Zoom meeting with my dad. If you didn't know, I'm writing a book with my dad. He wrote a book about parenting. My grandma, his mother, and I, you didn't know that? His mother and I are um, contributing 
to it. So we each have our parts in every chapter. It's fun. So we got a little feedback about that um, with the, his editors and it's going really well. They said it's very practical and seems like very helpful. So I was happy to hear that. Sometimes when you're in the middle of it, I, I went and wrote with my dad this summer uh, for a few days. And when you're in the middle of it, you start thinking when you've read it too much, like we're not saying anything at all. But to hear from someone else saying that this is really gonna meet a need and it's really practical and helpful. I love practical, so that was good to hear. All right, enough about that. These lasagnas are looking good. I used to be able to just plan a couple hours to meal prep for a whole week. These days, my goals are like, this whole day I wanna get two, I guess three meals made. How pathetic is that? But that is my life right now, it seems. Very busy, it's hard to get things done. Uh, I have a husband who works full-time outside of the house and has a business going as well as a full-time job and sometimes, wow, this seems like a lot, especially when my little ones are a lot and they have been. But at least I'm getting a couple things done for the weekend, it will make things go better. But it's intense and if I compare it to days where I can get five meals made in two hours, I'll feel very discouraged, <laughs> try not to. My goal is just to get these three meals done and I'm not even making one of them. Of course, I'm getting some things canned too. Look at those bubbles coming up. This one is the only one I only had half meat and I filled them with beef broth, by the way, but I only had one pound in that jar. I think I meant to have 24 pounds altogether and I ended up with 23. We stole a pound for the lasagnas. I think you can just chunk it up. Oh, it's probably easier to chop it, huh? Ooh, these are gonna be so good. I love that the green's on top. We should, probably should have hidden it down in uh, there. Uh, yeah, no, it's because I <laughs> forgot. I'm so busy, like, making the recipe, I totally forgot the spinach on, it's not in the recipe. Oh. So I was like, oh, I gotta put spinach on. So now it's on top. Yep. <laughs> At this point, I feel like I'm filming a food video in which I make no food. <laughs> I, Tori was asking me, can I go out and play with my friend? I said, okay, just clean up the costumes for me because I really am seeing costumes everywhere and it's driving me crazy. She did it, but she cleaned up the mannequin. Oops, somebody's gonna be upset. So there's a head still sitting there and there are shoes sitting there. Oops. All this time running around like a chicken with my head cut off has me thinking I'm going to pivot. I'm making a different meal. I'm making a, I'll write this in the description, but. I'm making a chicken taco type stew that I used to make all the time. Should I make it in a pressure cooker? Yes. I've never done it in the pressure cooker and I've always done it with chicken breasts, but we're pivoting. Just in case our friend does not like all the cheese things, I thought it'd be safer route to just do this one. That's a little less no cheese. <laughs> okay, so I'm throwing in a big tray, full tray, which would be five pounds, over five pounds of chicken thighs, boneless, skinless. This is the longest piece and Seth have ever slept together, ever. I could not be more thankful. This is my very thankful face. All right, Luca's helping me here. We got some chicken broth left over, just dumping the rest of that in, it's about half full. And two jars or cans of black beans, can of corn, diced tomatoes, tomato sauce, and I might double it all. Next up is an onion. Judah bought things on Amazon for experiments. <laughs> He's as bad as I am. Can you show what you got and why? I'll show them later. Okay, just give us a sneak peek so they can guess. No, everyone's gonna think I'm hungry and beer or something. <laughs> Keep in mind, we don't drink alcohol. Can you guess? <laughs> Baby break. Well, I'm not getting much done. I added um, extra salsa, by the way, extra can of corn, extra chicken broth, but otherwise the recipe I followed and I'll just put that in the fridge and stick it in a pressure cooker on Saturday and it'll be a really easy meal. We have some brown rice already cooked that we can mix with it even to bulk it up or serve on the side. The two lasagnas are ready to go. I'll put those in the fridge. We'll bake those the day we eat them. That'll be good and I'll try to make some homemade bread that day to eat on the side of those. Judah and Luca are about to work on the potatoes and carrots for me to roast. Whew, that's about it. I don't think I can handle much more. My black beans are almost done. <laughs> We're not getting anything done right now, are we? I got a worship practice tonight. I just wanna clean up. You know what? Any prepping I can do, I gotta count it as a win. I know I say that all the time. I'm really trying here. I want to be prepping more than I am, but what I'm doing is helping at least. <laughs> Late last night, I just got a little ground beef canned. That's all I did yesterday in the kitchen. <laughs> Besides the meals we ate. But we are eating whole 
foods, real food consistently. We're not eating out last minute. At least we're limping by and things will get easier too. <laughs> That's the thing with babies. Sometimes it feels like it's lasting forever and then all of a sudden it gets easier again. I'm thankful for that. Hey guys, I hope you have a great week. If you're able to prep something this weekend, know that I'm cheering for you, whether it's big or small. We'll talk to you later. Bye.